Hi, my name is Sai and welcome to Momentum. To learn more about artists' relationship with the natural world, we interviewed Peg Dean, a Suquamish weaver, about how her relationship to the environment shapes her creative practice. Come along as we discover artist Peg Dean. We are in Suquamish today with artist Peg Dean. Thank you for having us. So let's start off by answering the question, what exactly do you do? Like what art forms do you specialize in? I'm a painter with a traditional cultural flavor. And I also do bark weaving, cedar bark weaving, which is a traditional um, clothing of the Suquamish tribe. Growing up I, here in Suquamish, I didn't see anyone doing the traditional clothing. So as I grew up, I began researching through material and people myself just to find out how these uh, traditional clothings were constructed. How were they made and what, well, uh, all of the details that go with that. And in painting, I had a couple of years of going to the Institute of American Indian Arts. And that at that time it was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it was a government school. I went there a couple of years and realized how valuable and rich my Suquamish culture was. And so through different arts, I began building on that and using my traditional background. And to this day, I'm constantly inspired by my own tribe, by my own culture. It is so rich. How does your work comment on current environmental issues? I'm aware of the current. What I draw from is pre-European contact. I like to go back and think about what was it like before cars. And I've heard all my life that when we gathered food, we did not go and take it all. We gathered as many berries as we could that would get us through the winter until that next berry season. We would take fish to get us through the winter until that next fishing season. So what I do is try to put myself back into making an image that would make a viewer of a painting aware of the world around them. I've got a painting that is about water. We've got a dance uh, uh, and song about water. And the dancers will imagine or bring in what state of water they would like to be. They could be a rushing river. They could be a waterfall. They could be the tide. We've become so separated from from kind of nature that, that is around us that I try to bring you back a little bit and remind you these things are important. How did you get involved with all of this and your different art forms? Is it just something that you inherited from your ancestors or is it something new? Yes and yes. I had a childhood that uh, required myself to kind of find my own way. When I was in, I think it was kindergarten, I'm not sure, but I was at a school and this woman came out and she was part of the playground staff that kept check on the, on the little kids and to entertain us. She had, and this happened only once, but it's like emblazoned in my memory. So it started off my, my uh, interest in art. She had a chain and she laid it down on the cement step and she began, oh, here's a horse. And she just moved it into the shape of a horse or a dog or a rabbit. And it was just some off the cuff, 
uh, thing she was doing to keep the kids quiet or however. But I was amazed that she could take this little item and transform it into these images. I was taken with the ability to do that. So, of course, I went home, got string, and, you know, <laughs> tried my own stuff. But my cousin also uh, was an artist. She was probably 10 years uh, older than we were, but she uh, used a sketchbook, and she drew, she loved horses. So she uh, would draw, I was, I could watch her all day. What is your relationship to the natural materials that you use in your artwork? Well, when I do the traditional cedar bark weaving, oh my gosh, every time I go to gather cedar, and that's every year, I learn something new because early on I was told to listen. Every year there are so many trees that I gather from they are individuals. And finally, one time I woke up and I realized that they're a tribe of cedar trees and individual trees have this individual personality. Every tree I gather from, I learn more and more and more. My ancestors must have lived in such an astounding, rich surrounding without the interruption of Europeans. Uh, it must have been such a, a wonderful time. Thanks for watching. See you next time as we discover more about art here in the Puget Sound region.